Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video session on Agile documentation. Now you might be wondering why or how an Agile documentation can be an important topic for the PMI ACP or PMI PMP exam because generally speaking when it comes to documentation in Agile people you know tend to think that most of the Agile projects or project involving uh, Agile methodologies do not have any documentation at all or zero documentation policy but actually that is not quite true okay so you you might have seen or heard the phrases like these right uh, agile means no documentation or agile is all about only working software now definitely agile methodologies uh, value working software over a comprehensive documentation but agile also recognizes the importance of documentation in various aspects of the project life cycle i think the key point here to remember as a project manager or as an agile practitioner here is to you know strike a right balance between the documentation and a working software to ensure that an effective communication collaboration happens uh, within the team and uh, just to ensure the project success uh, with with these remember agile does not promote zero documentation rather there is an emphasis in agile on just enough documentation and and we will learn what what this just enough term means in in a coming slide okay my name is ashutosh deshmukh and i have more than 16 years of experience in software development work and project management in general i am both pmi pmp and pmi acp certified professional and after i completed my pmi acp certification back in 2021 i created a few practice tests for both pmp and pmi acp exam these are udemy courses um, and these are now taken by more than uh, 900 uh, aspirants across the globe and i have an overall 4.6 udemy rating on the udemy platform so if you are you know planning to prepare for either a pmi pmp or a pmi acp certification you may want to go and check out my practice test on the certification exams on the udemy platform uh, and um, i have uh, like many aspirants have successfully cleared this certification exam uh, after taking these courses so with that out of the way let's jump into the uh, agenda for our today's uh, session uh, here is the thing uh, we will be starting with the guiding principles for agile documentation okay so here we will learn how to strike that right balance that we talked about between documentation and some of the agile principles that we know and learn so we will we will basically cover the different types of documentations in agile and uh when you will see that list you will probably agree that some of these uh, or maybe most of those documentations which i am going to mention you are either using it in your agile projects or in in your scrum teams uh, so you once you find that list i will i will hopefully uh, you know uh, be able to convince you that these documents are very important from project execution perspective we will then cover some of the best practices when it comes to agile documentation and we should also cover some of the pitfalls and things that you should be a little bit careful about uh, as an as an agile project professional or as a project manager uh, and some of the things that you should try and avoid okay so without further delay let's jump in and start with our first point uh, which is learning about those guiding principles uh, for the agile documentation so i mentioned uh, you know three guiding principles here for agile documentation the first one or the first guiding principle here is just enough documentation just enough documentation in agile basically refers to creating the minimal amount of documentation which is just enough or absolutely necessary to support effective communication effective team collaboration and project delivery you know it emphasizes basically providing the right level of information without adding you know unnecessary overhead the goal or aim of this document is to provide the context 
provide the guidance and provide the critical information to the right people at the right time which is needed for you know any team or for for the key stakeholders in the in the project team documentation should be relevant to the current phase of the project and the needs of the team and the respective stakeholders it should focus on addressing specific challenges and the requirement you know documentation should provide sufficient context for understanding the software for example you know explaining the decision design decisions or interfaces uh, if your software has any interdependencies then then the documentation should provide that extra understanding related to those interdependencies remember unnecessary or excessive documentation can become waste of time and resources an agile team should aim to eliminate all such wasteful practices and instead the team should you know only focus on creating the documentation which which adds value so avoiding the excessive or redundant documentation is is equally important here next the guiding principle in in agile documentation is all of your agile documentation should be value driven uh, which means the document should provide value to the project by enhancing the understanding or it may the documentation should uh, you know help in communication and the documentation should help in decision making so it should basically help team members and stakeholders achieve their goals more effectively right that is when we can say that the documentation is value driven i gave a couple of examples here uh, one for the user story and one for the acceptance criteria i remember in scrum the product owner uh, you know generally create these user stories and also mention about the acceptance criteria now this is an essential and a value driven documentation this is because if these two artifacts are not prepared or prepared very poorly then it will have a you know clearly a negative impact on the product deliverables if the user story is incomplete for example or does not have the you know the detailed acceptance uh, uh, criteria then there is a good chance that the planned feature may not be fulfilling the expected behavior right uh, so this is this is what uh, the main point about value driven uh, uh, documentation that uh, the focus of these artifacts is uh, you know uh, what what would be the impact on the on the product side right so that kind of documentation should be created the third gu guiding principle is uh related to the collaboration and communication aspects in in agile so the documentation should support you know team discussions the knowledge sharing should happen between the team members and uh, these these documentation should help alignment among the stakeholders the documentation should provide as i mentioned right sufficient context for understanding the software uh such as explaining the design decisions or the interface interfaces or you know any interdependencies i would like to quote one example of a documentation uh which provides more context for understanding uh, especially in the software projects and it is called architectural decision record or an adr for short now this architectural decision record is a document which captures you know important design decisions made during the development of a software project right it provides the rationale it provides the context considerations and various trade offs behind each decision and this will ensure that the team members and all the stakeholders have a clear understanding of the software's architecture and the design principles okay uh, now that we understand what are the guiding principles behind uh, agile documentation let's understand some of the commonly used uh, agile documents uh if you are an experienced scrum master or um, or a member of a scrum team there is a good probability that you probably know many of these and you might be using in fact many of these in your day to day uh, project activities so uh, i i'm just switching to the next slide here we go so these are the you know different types of documentations in in agile right the first one is obviously the user stories and acceptance criteria Uh, agile or a scrum team you know often use these user stories to capture the high level requirements in a concise format right uh, these user stories are supported by the acceptance criteria which uh, kind of outlines the specific conditions which must be met 
uh, for the user story to be considered complete and i'm sure uh, during your uh, like scrum or agile uh, uh, project demos you you might have used these acceptance criteria to mark the story as uh, done user stories in agile are typically written in a in a specific format uh, which essentially captures the user's perspective and the desired functionality the most common format that i saw for writing the user story is something on these lines right like as a user i want to do you know where you mention your goal so that and then you mention the benefit uh, uh, of of that story so that's basically the template as an example uh, we can say for ex- uh, something like this as a customer i want to be able to easily reset my password so that i can regain the access to my account now this could be a template for the for the user story remember the goal of a user story is to capture the user's perspective right the desired functionality and the value it brings to the user or to the business you know the format which is chosen uh, for writing these user stories should be consistent within the team and organization just to ensure right like the clear communication and the understanding so this is the first type of documentation next we have a product backlog again if you are you know if you are part of the scrum team or have worked on scrum fem week uh, before you probably know what the product backlog is right remember the product backlog is a crucial concept which plays a very important role in managing and prioritizing the work which needs to be done on a project a uh, product backlog is a dynamic and evolving list of the features enhancements user stories bug fixes and any other work item which needs to be you know completed on the project the product backlog provides a clear overview of what needs to be developed and guides the team's activity throughout the project's life cycle uh, i said that right the product backlog is dynamic but what does this mean uh, uh, it it basically means that the product backlog is like a living document which undergoes changes and it evolves over a period of time uh the new items can be added into the product backlog those are called pbis right product backlog items uh existing pbis uh, can be modified or can be removed if if they no more make sense to the project's goal and the priorities uh, also can be adjusted based on the changing requirement and business needs that is why the the product backlog is considered as a dynamic in nature the product backlog is typically owned and managed by the product owner the product owner is obviously responsible for creating maintaining prioritizing these backlog items uh, especially in scrum uh, of course product owner collaborate with the stakeholders to gather the requirements and ensures that the you know the backlog reflects the project's vision and the business goals next in the list is the wireframes and mockups and maybe compared to the user story or the acceptance criteria and product backlog this may be less popular but in my view it can be an equally important and useful agile documentation type both wireframes and mockups can be super helpful in agile projects because it provides those visual representations of the user interface and and functionality of a of an application right both of these offer a tangible way uh, to kind of communicate the design ideas user interactions and overall layout to the development team stakeholders and and sometimes even clients and customers uh, creating wireframes and mockups early in the project allows stakeholders to visualize the end product before any coding or any software development work begins right uh, this helps in identifying any potential design flaws usability issues and misunderstanding early on uh, reducing the chances of a rework later in the development process visual representation is obviously uh, much easier to understand than you know like a long written descriptions so instead of writing pages and pages of documentation on a black and white notepad for example which can be quite boring uh, and this is where you know the the visual nature of wireframes and mockups can be uh, you know mighty helpful for the project team to understand the exact requirements much better and faster these wireframes and mockups serves as a common language right which brings the gap between a technical and non technical team members and uh, you know it may help uh, fostering the overall effective communication in agile the goal is obviously to deliver value quickly and iteratively so wireframes and mockups can 
can support this by ensuring that the design aligns with the user needs it enables the efficient development and reducing the risk of misunderstanding they can be valuable tools for creating a shared understanding and driving the collaboration among the team members and stakeholders throughout the uh, you know the project life cycle the last documentation uh, which i mentioned here uh, and it probably is more commonly uh, found in an engineering team is the bunch of technical documents right uh, again depending on the complexity of the project the technical documentation related to the system architecture design decision data models and integration points can be developed this documentation helps basically the development team understand how different components of the software interact and how they should be implemented one example of the uh, such kind of a technical documentation could be uh, you know an api documentation application programming interface documentation uh, for integration purpose the documentation uh, this documentation can be super has helpful because api documentation helps developers understand how to interact with the software's functionality programmatically okay now that we have uh, got a good understanding of the different types of agile documentation and artifacts let's understand some of the best practices when it comes to the agile uh, documentation again these will be uh, you know some of the commonly uh, you know followed practices best practices for example uh, writing your documentation in a user centric language right uh, the documentation should be following the user centric language meaning that it should be created with audiences needs as well as uh, the expertise of the audience in mind so you don't want to use too many technical terms or you know uh, fancy jargons when you are creating a user manual for example uh, so if if you are uh, if you are asked to create a user manual for a payment app for for example uh, better the focus should be on developing a simple easy to follow instructions maybe like a step by step guide to help the users effectively use the flows in the payment app right uh, it should be understandable and relevant to the target audience i think that's what the main takeaway there next uh, keep the you know agile documents as living documents uh, when i when i mean what i mean by that is uh, in agile right we we expect the changes to happen throughout the project so the requirement of the project may change depending on the newer and a different uh, business realities over a period of time so accordingly the project team may have to you know keep making changes into the document the the agile project documentation should be it should not be like developed once and used everywhere and never touched again right so if there are new improvements uh, for example made in the design after the design review discussion with the solution architects for example then it is obvious that the technical design documentation may has to be updated accordingly right so we have you have to probably keep on updating these uh, documents over a period of time now one question may come up in mind is uh, where exactly can the agile team keep these documents well the answer for this may vary actually depending on the project team and uh, depending on the performing organization in my own experience though i saw teams often use tools such as confluence in order to keep uh, some of these agile documents such as let's say technical design document however for user stories and you know acceptance criteria and things like that they are they are usually kept in another popular software called jira so there is no really one standard answer here like uh, where these documents are kept depending on the project and depending on the performance performing organization the place to host these documentation will will change it is probably more important to include you know uh, these uh, uh, these documentation in some in some place where everyone can see right uh, next point is about visual aids uh, uh, it is probably important to include some visual elements when you are developing these artifacts so things like uh, you know diagrams or flow charts or screenshot or even uh, a small video tutorial 
explaining step by step uh, uh, certain things uh, can be you know super helpful remember as a human we can easily remember the pictures the images and videos much more easily so there is no harm in you know including some of these additional uh, visual elements visual aids while while preparing the artifacts these diagrams charts images can you know help to explain complex concepts or processes more clearly it provides a visual repre- representation which is often easier right to understand than a long textual dis- description so team members and users are more likely to retain the information which is presented visually okay so uh, moving on uh, on the last point is about version control like this is one of the you know uh, important uh, point when it comes to best practices version control basically means uh, you will be keeping a track of all the changes which may happen to your uh, project artifacts or the documentation so it helps in easily tracking the changes right so version controls allow you to track every change made to the document over a period of time a few moments ago right we discussed about uh, you know there could be a good chance of documentation may undergo the change and there will be a modification happening to these documents depending on the changes which are happening in the project so that's why it becomes very important crucial in fact to maintain um you know this history of edits understanding how the document has evolved and who made uh, the changes what changes are made etc version control ensures that multiple individuals also you know can work on the same document simultaneously without any conflicting changes remember in agile we have this concept of uh, uh, knowledge sharing team collaboration and things like that so version control can ensure uh, you know multiple individuals can work on the common document uh, without kind of encroaching on each other's work so uh one more thing which where the version control can be helpful is in the error recovery for example uh you know mistakes and errors can happen right during the documentation editing and version control can allow you to revert or go to the previous version in case if there is any undesirable changes are made uh, preventing the data loss and the need to recreate the entire document again so yep these are some of the best practices and we will just wrap up our uh, session with some of the pitfalls that you you probably want to avoid i think the first point is very obvious here right like uh, overdoing the documentation is definitely not uh, not recommended right uh, just don't overdo it so you may want to review the relevance of some of the documentations which you are currently doing with all your stakeholders maybe you want to talk to your development team or talk to your project uh, product owner talk to your project sponsor for example just to check if any of the documentations which are currently used on the project are they adding any value or not and if they are not adding any value you you may want to you know discontinue using it all together uh, so that's one uh, but in general the message here is don't overdo the documentation uh, not updating the project document Uh, is is you know also can be harmful right so uh, as we discussed throughout the session right agile uh, projects typically undergo uh, you know a lot of changes throughout the project life cycle and the information if it is not updated in these project artifacts you know can quickly become stale and maybe outdated and this kind of stale information can be more harmful to the project as it may have you know some incorrect or very old data and very old information from the past and that could you know certainly derail some of the project objectives so lack of updating the project artifacts or documentation is definitely an anti pattern and you should avoid it as much as possible uh the last point is about uh, not doing the documentation isolation uh, what i mean by that is you should probably you know uh, keep this documentation that you have created uh, accessible to the whole of your agile team um you know that that way it will you know promote the collaboration shared understanding and uh, you know it may help the team to make uh, you know informed decisions in uh, so agile teams obviously consist of you know various roles and different expertise so documentation should provide that context and clarity ensuring that everyone understands the project's goals the requirements and the overall progress so if you if you keep these documentation accessible it helps the team to you know gain a shared understanding of the project's scopes and objectives okay so uh, with that uh, i think i have covered all the points uh, and um, 
I, I kind of hope that the information which is shared in this session uh, was was helpful for you to you know understand the guiding principles behind the agile documentation and what are the different types of agile documents which you can use uh, in your agile projects what are the do's and don'ts and uh, you know some of the best practices and the pitfalls that you should avoid with regards to these uh, uh, documentation right so if you find this uh, session useful please give it a like and uh, consider subscribing to this channel I am planning to add, uh, you know, more videos uh, related to the PMI ACP and PMI PMP certification related topics in future. So if you have any specific topics, for example, which you want uh, more information around, uh, uh, do let me know and I'll, I'll see if I can, you know, make those videos on that. So if you have any, you know, further question or feedback or comment uh, on this, please feel free to reach out. And uh, I thank you for watching this session.